Hey guys, so in this video, we'll be building an e-commerce website with WooCommerce. So it'll look like this by the end of the video. So it's just a basic e-commerce website. So you're able to add products to cart and check out. So if this is something you'd like to learn how to do, then watch this video. Okay, so first you'll need a WordPress website. So you'll need to purchase website hosting. So I recommend using Cloudways. So you can check the link in the description for my referral link to sign up to Cloudways. So once you have WordPress installed on a server, then you'll have a dashboard that looks like this. So if we check our website, it's just a standard WordPress theme for 2024, but this isn't a good theme for setting up an e-commerce store. So what we're gonna do is install a plugin that will provide us with a good starter theme. So back in dashboards, what you wanna do is go into plugins and then add new plugin and then search for starter template. Okay, and then we're gonna click install now and then activate. Okay, so we're gonna use one of their pre-made templates. So build with templates. Okay, and then we're gonna use Elementor. And over here, we'll look at the e-commerce templates. So we can click e-commerce. Okay, so they have some paid and free ones, but we'll just use the free ones in this tutorial. Okay, so we can use this template over here, the first one, which is a free template. So we'll click that one. Okay, so the website will look like this. So it's uh, just a general store. So over here at the start, we can upload our own logo. So if you have a logo, you can upload it here as well as setting the width. So once you upload the logo, it will appear over here and then you can adjust the width accordingly. So we'll just skip this for now. Okay, and then you can choose your color palette. So if you click one, it'll change the overall color layout. If you check over here, it's more of a red. Okay, but I'll just stick with the default one for now. And then as well as the font. So right now it's Lado, let's change it to Montserrat then click continue. Okay, and then you just enter in your details. You just enter your name, email, and building website for yourself. You wanna keep all these activated just so all the data is able to be imported. So click submit and build my website. Okay, so now it's doing the installation process and then I'll come back once it's all set up. Okay, great, so now our website is ready. So we can click view our website. Awesome, so we have a great starting point here for our WooCommerce website. So it also imported some test products and banners and graphics and content. So you essentially you can take this layout and then you just import your, your business content. Okay, so let's go and do that now. If we go here into edit with Elementor, we can edit the homepage. Okay, we can just close this off. So essentially here with Elementor, it's a drag and drop editor. So you're able to take these pre-made templates over here and then update them directly in Elementor. Okay, so we can just change this text. So let's go over here and then in the sidebar here, you can update it, let's say, Map be lit shop is now live. Okay, and then up here is the content and you're also able to edit the styles here. So if you wanna change the color, we can do that here. So you can either enter the hex code or just use their interactive slider here. So let's make it red. Then you can update the alignment. And then we can go down here. So if you wanna take off a section, you can just click the X. Okay, so that we can remove that. Feature products you wanna keep. And then this section we can you can edit it with your information. Okay, and then over here, you can add a new section. So to do that, what you wanna do is just go here into the widgets and then you would pick out the widget which you'd like to add. But again, you should use a container. Containers will help with the spacing of your elements as well as keeping them responsive. So if you wanna add in a new section, you just add and then pick one of these dividers. So if you just wanna do say a two by one layout, say a two column layout, you click this one and then you would add in the elements over here. So we can have an image on one side, we pick an image from the library already. So let's just use this bag. And then on the other side, we can add in some more elements. So we can add in some text as well as say a button. We search widget, we can search button and then we, we can add it right underneath. You can also use the navigator here if you're having trouble with the selector. So you can just drag it underneath and then there we go. Okay, so we'll just remove this section after just going over how to navigate the Elementor Builder. Okay, and then when you wanna click save, you just click update. Okay, so I have another video on my channel regarding building a complete website with Elementor. So we won't focus too much on the design elements. In this video, we'll be focused more on setting up WooCommerce as if the imported theme, the design looks good already. Okay, so what you wanna do is go back to your admin and then we're gonna go here into WooCommerce and home. Great, so we can just follow their setup wizard over here and click set up my store. Okay, and just walk through their questionnaire. Again, fill out your details over here to continue. Okay, so these are just additional features which you'd like to add. I don't think these are necessary at the moment, but you're free to install any of them. Other than Woo Payments, this one is 
needed for enabling WooCommerce payments. So keep that one enabled. And then everything else I think you can get rid of. Yep, and automated sales tax, you can enable that as well. Okay, so now I'll install everything. Okay, great. So WooCommerce is now installed. So again, it's gonna ask you to fill out these. Our theme is already looking good, so we don't need to set that up. Next, we can set up the payments. So go over here and to set up Woo Payments. Uh, so it's asking you to set up a WordPress.com account. So I don't have that set up. So you can just go back and then set this up manually, I believe. So go here into WooCommerce and then Settings. And then over here in Payments. So again, here is all the payment methods you can enable. WooCommerce stores, I usually go with either Woo Payments or Stripe. So you can choose either or, or have both. Setting up Woo Commerce Payments, so if you click Finish Setup, again, you would have to just set up an account with WordPress.com and then you'll be able to just enter in your bank account details. Okay, so once you have that set up, we can continue with the configuration. So again, back here into Home. So after you have Woo Commerce Payments set up, you can set up your tax rates. So over here, okay, and you can set up tax rates manually, or if you don't charge sales tax, you can enable just disable it so just set up tax rates manually as well since so in this case you'll have to set up a wordpress account as well okay so once you have your um, tax rates you can just enter them over here and then this is where you would set up your tax rate option so if you want to by default you enter your price exclusive of tax so just keeping that by default i think is best and then after that we can go back into home and then set up our shipping Okay, so you go to shipping costs. Okay, so over here, you just enter in your address of your store, and then you'll be able to enable shipping from your store location. Okay, and then finishing off with the settings, we can go over here into the general settings. And again, over here, you'll just enter in your business address, as well as the currencies, which you'd like to charge your products in. Okay, so we went over taxes, shipping, and payments. Let's look at accounts and privacy. Okay, so with this, it allows guest checkout. So if you'd like to enable that, you can do that over here. So it's enabled by default and then allow customers to create an account during checkout. I think that's good to have. And again, allow account creation. No, I don't want them to generate a username automatically. Okay, and then you can enable erasing data if that's something that's in accordance with your privacy policy. And again, adding your privacy policy over here. And then over here, how long you'd like to retain the personal data on your servers. But in this case, it's set to indefinitely. So you can update that here according to your privacy policies. Again, click Save Changes. Okay, and then over here we have emails. So this is like the email notifications that customers will get upon placing an order. So you can view them all over here. Okay, so these notifications over here are for admins. So new order, canceled order, failed orders. And then these ones are for the customer. So if you check over here with the customer invoice, you can manage that email. And then it gives you the email contents over here. So you can, you're free to edit this one. Okay, awesome. So now our store is set up. If you followed all these instructions, next I'll just show you how to add new products and categories. Okay, so we go here into products and then all products. So again, these are products that were imported through the demo. So if you want to just delete them, you can just just select all of them and then you can click move to trash or you can just delete one at a time by just moving into trash like this. And then over here you can set products as featured. Okay, so we'll create a new product. So click add new. So let's just say, I think the product we deleted was like a black shoe, so black shoes. Okay, so over here you would write the description and then the pricing and then sales, the sale price if you're running sales. So again, over here you wanna select the correct product. So it's just a simple product. It's not a virtual product or a downloadable product. This is a physical product by default. So inventory, you can write in your SKUs, stock management, and the status. Again, with shipping, you wanna enter in the weight of the product as well as its dimensions. And then over here, you can add the shipping class. And then the link products, if you have uh, cross sales or upsales, you can connect those products here. So again, these are tags. So you can attribute such as size and color in this section and then advance. Yeah, there's nothing really here. Okay, so just to start out, make sure you enter in the price, the inventory, and the shipping correctly. And the side here is where you want to add in the product images. Okay, so we'll take the shoe over here. And you can add in more images in the product gallery. So that those are just additional images. So we can add that as another image. So this is the main image. Okay, and then you want to add in a category. So these are the categories imported by default. So let's just add a new category. Let's name it shoes. And then it's its own category. But if you want to link it to another category like men's and then shoes, you can do that over here. But I'll just set it as a standalone category and click add new category. Okay, and then these are tags. 
again, you don't need these at the start. They just help with if you're creating filters or if you have a search bar, it makes it easier for the search algorithm to pick up the correct products. Once you're ready to publish the product, you can just click publish. Okay, great. So let's view the product. Awesome. So here's our shoe product that we created. And then you see over here, additional images are shown in the gallery. Okay, I'll add the shoe collection up here in the main menu as well as we set that up. So over here, what you want to do is go into menus and then make sure you're selecting the correct menu. So in our case, it's primary menu and click select and then go to categories and then view all. Let's search our shoe category. Okay, so over here, let's click view this category. So we can just copy the link and then go back into the menu over here as it doesn't seem to be appearing here at the moment. So what you want to do is just custom link and then write shoe. And then over here in the URL, you want to just paste in the URL to your category and then we can just move it underneath men and click save. And then we can check our menu. Awesome. So now it's over here in our main menu. Okay. So lastly, I'll just go over some additional features of WooCommerce so we can look over here with their analytics. So this just goes over your sales data. So you can see your net sales and orders. And then again, over here in WooCommerce, when you have orders up here, over here under orders, and then customers will be accessed through customers. So you can view data on your customers over here. Okay. And then in reports, you'll be able to just view again, in terms of sales, just going to reports would be better, but analytics is good more for looking at data, which you can interpret to create marketing campaigns. And then over here, lastly, they have marketing. And then over here, you have your payments tab. So again, this is where you would set up your payments. Okay, and then they have the marketing tab over here. So this section will allow you to integrate other marketing channels such as Google Ads and Pinterest, as well as other available marketing tools here, which you can install. So if you want to connect MailChimp, you can do that directly through this tab. And then we can set up coupons as well over here. Okay. So I'll just show you how to make a quick coupon. So click create your first coupon. And then over here, it's just a general percentage discount. So let's just say 30% and then you can set up usage restrictions. So you want to make sure that they spend at least $5 and then no maximum. Okay. And then if you want to set this coupon as individual use only excluding sales or specific to certain products and categories, and then the usage usage limit. So let's say if you wanted to use one time per user, and then the, the amount of times this coupon could be used throughout your store, but I'll just keep it as unlimited. And then you'll write the coupon code over here. So let's just say launch code 30, since it's 30% off, and then we'll click publish. Okay, great. So we have our coupon over here. So let's check out our coupons. Yep. So it's over here and it's a percentage discount. Okay, great. So we have a functioning store. So let's just do a quick run through of the checkout process. So let's add a product to our cart. So let's go into shoes and then black shoes and add to cart, and then view the cart, then apply our coupon. So it's launch code 30, apply our coupon. Awesome. So we get 30% off. Let's click checkout and great. Our checkout process is working again, since we didn't connect uh, Stripe or Woo payments, it's not able to process the order, but if you connect your payment processor, then you'll be able to place an order. So this concludes the end of the video. I hope you were able to set up a WooCommerce website with this tutorial. If you're looking for help with your WooCommerce website for your business, then you can check out my website, mapletmedia.ca. Please like and subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.